Chapter 20 Antonyms and Synonyms Antonyms A typical frog has tiny teeth, a wide mouth, a narrow body and long legs. It may look weak in appearance, but its mouth is large. It can swallow its prey in one go. The frog's legs are strong as it needs to leap every now and then. The frog's short padded front legs absorb the shock of land. It should be noted that the frog is neckless. It goes through various changes in its journey to adulthood, from an egg to a tadpole to a frog. Did you notice the following words and the way they are used in the passage? Tiny, large, long, short. Wide, narrow, weak, strong. Let us take a closer look at these sets of words. These are words that are opposite in meaning to each other. These are called antonyms or opposites. Using them in relation to each other brings out the difference in meaning. For example, rough, smooth. The bark of the old tree was rough. The paint glided over the smooth surface of the wall. In the given sentence, rough and smooth refers to the texture of particular things, highlighting the contrast because of the opposite meanings. Such words are examples of antonyms. Formation of antonyms Antonyms are formed by adding prefixes and suffixes. A. By using prefix. Adding I L. 1. The car was parked illegally. 2. One can never solve problems by illogical reasoning. 3. Even though the government is making efforts to educate people, there are still a large number of people who are illiterate in our country. Adding I R. 1. An irresponsible attitude creates problems. 2. The bell rang after irregular intervals. 3. The accident caused irreparable damage to the car. B. By using suffix. 1. The money can be usefully spent on new books. 2. What a useless waste of resources. 3. We are hopeful about her winning the singing competition. 3. They both went on for a seemingly hopeless quest to find their lost dog. 5. You should be extremely careful while using sharp objects such as blades and knives. 6. How can you be so careless about your health? C. By using a word that is opposite in meaning. Innocent, guilty. It is unfair to punish the innocent for something that they have not done. The guilty expression on the face of the thief proved that he was lying. Synonyms Read the following story. There was a very narrow bridge over a river. One day, a goat was crossing this bridge. Just when he reached in the middle of the bridge, he met another goat. There was no space for them to pass each other. Go back, he said to the other goat. There is no space for both of us. Why should I go back? said the other goat. Why don't you go back? You must go back, said the first goat, because I am stronger than you. You are not mightier than me, said the second goat. We will see about that, said the first goat, and he lowered his horns to halt the other goat. Stop, said the second goat. If we fight, we shall both fall into the river and drown. Instead, I have a solution. I shall lie down and you may cross over me. The wise goat lay down on the bridge and the other goat walked lightly over him. They passed each other and went on their ways. Some words are highlighted in the above story. These are middle, stronger, halt, and solution. Read the story again and notice the highlighted words in this version. There was a very narrow bridge over the river. One day, a goat was crossing this bridge. In the center of the bridge, 
he met another goat. There was no space for them to pass each other. Go back, he said to the other goat. There is no space for both of us. Why should I go back, said the other goat. Why don't you go back? You must go back, said the first goat. Because I am more powerful than you. You are not mightier than me, said the second goat. We will see about that said the first goat and he lowered his horns to stop the other goat. Stop, said the second goat. If we fight, we shall both fall into the river and drown. And said, I have an answer to the problem. I shall lie down and you may cross over me. The wise goat lay down on the bridge and the other goat walked lightly over him. They passed each other and went on their ways. Did you notice the change? We replaced the words in bold of the first passage with words of nearly the same meaning we replaced. Solution with answer. Middle with center. Stronger with powerful. Halt with stop. You will notice that words in the first passage mean the same as the colored words of the second passage. Such words are called synonyms. In other words, a word that has the same or a nearly similar meaning to that of other word is called a synonym. For example, 1. Members of the public joined in contributing for a social cause. Read the sentence again. Members of the public united to contribute for a social cause. Did you notice that joined was replaced by united? as it conveyed the same meaning. 2. Living in the city is more expensive than living in a village. We can replace expensive with its synonym costly. Read the sentence again. Living in the city is more costly than living in a village. Using a synonym adds variety and makes the language more interesting. For example, it is particularly interesting to compare the two versions. We can rewrite the sentence as It is particularly fascinating to compare the two versions. Read the given paragraph. Mrs. and Mr. Srivastava purchased a house far from the center of the city. Luckily for them, the location was good and even their neighbors were supportive and understanding. The calm atmosphere was a relief from their last locality, which was very crowded. We can also write this paragraph as, Mrs. and Mr. Srivastava bought a house distant from the heart of the city. Fortunately for them, the location was good and even their neighbors were supportive and understanding. The peaceful atmosphere was a relief from their last locality, which was overpopulated. In other words, we can use synonyms to say the same thing in a different way. They can be used to avoid repetitions of the same word in paragraphs, stories and conversations.